Okay, we're going to combine like terms here. Notice that both of these radicals are already simplified. Um, we're adding the square root of 2 plus another square root of 2. So we're going to combine our like terms, meaning if I had, for example, one apple and I add it with another apple, we discussed in classic that gave us actually two apples. The same idea is happening here that if I have one of the square root of 2's plus the second square root of 2, symbolically I get two square root of 2's. And we're done. Example 3 is similar. We have the square root of x plus the square root of x both simplified radicals. One apple plus another apple is going to end up giving us two apples. Number five. Three apples plus two apples. Three apples plus two apples gives us five apples. We're combining like terms. Number seven. In number seven, let's notice something here. We have a negative sign in front of the square root of five, and both of these radicals are simplified. If I owe one apple and I have two apples, Let's look at the details. This negative sign means negative 1 times our square root of 5. So when I combine my like terms, I could do this a couple of ways. I can think of the apple scenario, owing 1 and adding 2 leaves me with 1 apple. If I use the distributive property, which is happening as well, that's really under the hood, I'm going to take the negative 1 constant and I'm going to add it with 2. So negative 1 plus 2 will give me positive 1 times that square root of 5, or just simply square root of 5. So there's two ways we can look at this. We can look at it by adding our apples, or we can actually use the distributive property, which gives us the same answer. And we're done. Number 9, negative 2 times the square root of 7 plus 3 times the square root of 5. Notice that both radicals are simplified. So if I owe two apples and I have three bananas, I cannot combine my fruit. My apples bananas don't combine. So I have negative 2 times the square root of 7 plus our 3 times the square root of 5 and we're done. This was already simplified. We can't add these terms. We can get, not combine these terms because they're not like. Number 11, 6 times the square root of 7 plus 3 times the square root of 7. Now notice again, the radicals here are simplified. So I have 6 apples plus my 3 apples gives me nine apples and we're done if you like to use a distributive property we get six plus three in parentheses times that square root of seven gives you nine times the square root of seven meaning we take the six we add it with our three we end up keeping the square root of seven so it's nine times the square root of seven Number 13, 12 times the square root of 7 plus 3 times the square root of 5. If I have 12 apples plus 3 bananas, or plus 5, sorry, let's go back. 12 apples plus 3 bananas. We cannot combine these like terms. They're not like, they're not the same. 
So we're done. Fifteen. Eight times the square root of five minus two times the square root of five minus our five. I got eight apples minus two apples. Now eight minus two gives me six. Don't forget I have this minus five out here. Now this radical that we see here, square root of five, is different than five. These terms are not like. We can't combine them. You can think of this as six apples minus five dollars. You can't combine your apples with your dollars and you're done. Seventeen. The square root of x plus the square root of y minus two. Notice these terms are, these radicals are simplified and they are both different. Meaning I have an apple plus a banana minus two dollars. I can't combine like terms. They're all different terms. Number 19, 3 times the square root of x plus the square root of x minus 2 times the square root of y minus the square root of y. I have 3 apples plus an apple is going to end up giving me 4 apples. I also have well, I should say I owe two bananas, and I owe another banana. So if I owe two and I owe one, I'm going to end up owing three bananas. You're done. Twenty-one. The square root of twelve plus two. I should say, plus the square root of 2 minus the square root of 3. Now, at first glance, we may think that we can't combine any terms. But notice the square root of 12 here. This radical can be simplified. So if we ever combine terms here for radicals, combining like terms, our radicals always have to be simplified. The square root of 2 is simplified. And the square root of 3 is also simplified. So the only radical I have to simplify is the one in red. So the square root of 12 is really 4 times 3. We find the largest perfect square that factors into 12. 3 is that quotient. And by the product rule, we get the square root of 4 times the square root of 3, which is 2 times the square root of 3. Bring down your addition of the square root of 2 and the subtraction of the square root of 3. Notice now that I have two apples and I owe an apple. Those terms are like. That means I have an apple and then I have a banana. Square root of 3 plus the square root of 2. Sorry. Looks like that's a minus sign. 21. 23. 2 times the square root of 12. Plus 3 times the square root of 2. Plus 4 times the square root of 3. We can simplify the radical square root of 12 here. And when we do, Notice what we're doing here. We're going to find the largest perfect square that goes into 12, which is 4. 3 is going to be our quotient. By the product rule, we get the square root of 4 times the square root of 3, which is 2 times the square root of 3. Don't forget to bring down that addition of 3 times the square root of 2 plus 4 times the square root of 3. I have two apples plus four apples gives me six apples.
plus 3 times the square root of 2. Twenty-five, negative two, times the square root of twenty, plus seven, times the square root of five, plus two. The square root of five is a simplified radical, but the square root of twenty, we can simplify. We write this as four times five, because four is the largest perfect square that goes into twenty. By the product rule, we have the square root of 5 times the square root of 4, which is 2 times the square root of 5. Bring down your addition of 7 times the square root of 5, and then your addition of 2. We're going, we have 2 apples plus 7 apples. is going to end up giving us 9 apples. Don't forget to add your 2, but notice that these terms are not like, and so we can't simplify them. Twenty-seven. Five times the square root of forty-eight plus two times the square root of twelve minus one. So this problem has two radicals to simplify. The square root of forty-eight, the square root of twelve. So forty-eight, we need to find the largest perfect square that goes into forty-eight. And so go through your perfect square less, right? So here we go. So if you notice that 16 times 3 is 48, where 16 is the largest perfect square that goes into 48. For the 12, we have 4 times our 3. The square root of 16 times the square root of 3. The square root of 4 times the square root of 3. So I get 4 times the square root of 3 and 2 times the square root of 3. Don't forget to bring down the values that are being multiplied. In other words, 5 is being multiplied to that radical the first radical, and 2 is being multiplied to the second. So we get 5 times 4 times the square root of 3 plus 2 times 2 times the square root of 3 minus 1. So 5 times 4 is 20. 20 times the square root of 3 plus 4 times the square root of 3 minus 1 gives us 24 times the square root of 3 minus 1. And we're done. The square root of 4x plus 4 times the square root of x. Now notice that these two radicals are different. We have the square root of x, and here we have the square root of 4x. We can simplify the first radical, square root of 4x square root of 4 times the square root of x plus 4 times the square root of x. Square root of 4 is going to be a 2 times the square root of x plus 4 times the square root of x. So we have here 2 apples plus 4 apples gives us 6 apples. And we're done. Thirty-one, the square root of seventy-five plus two times the square root of five. We can simplify our square root of seventy-five. The largest perfect square that goes into seventy-five is twenty-five, and we have twenty-five times three. The product rule: we have the square root of twenty-five times the square root of three, which is five times the square root of three. Bring down your addition of 2 times the square root of 5. And notice that we cannot combine like terms. Both of these radicals are different. 
33. The square root of 75 plus the square root of 8 minus 5. We can simplify the square root of 75. That's the square root of 25 times 3 plus the square root of 4 times 2 minus 5. The product rule says we get the square root of 25 times the square root of 3 plus the square root of 4 times the square root of 2 minus the 5. 5 times the square root of 3 plus 2 times the square root of 2 minus 5. We're done because every term here is different and we're combining like terms. 35. The square root of 72 minus 6 times the square root of 2. Now we need the largest perfect square again that goes into 72 because this radical is not simplified. The first one is not. So the square root of 36 times 2. 36 is the largest perfect square that goes into 72. 2 is our quotient by the product rule. The square root of 36 times the square root of 2. We get 6 times the square root of 2 minus another 6 times the square root of 2. So we're bringing down the minus 6 times the square root of 2 here. Notice something interesting. The square root of 2 and the square root of 2 is the same radical. So if I have 6 apples and I owe 6 apples, then my apples are gone. The answer is 0. If I use the distributive property, I get 6 minus 6 the constants in front here, 6 and 6, subtracted, and I'm going to keep my square root of 2. Now 6 minus 6 is 0. 0 times the square root of 2 is 0. 0 times any number is 0. So both ways can be done, and notice that they're both 0. 37. square root of 24 plus 4 times the square root of 6. The first radical can be simplified. We need the largest perfect square that goes into 24. Notice 4 times 6 is 24 where 4 is the largest perfect square that goes into 24. Our quotient is 6. So the square root of 4 times the square root of 6 by the product rule gives us 2 times the square root of 6. Bring down your addition of 4 times the square root of 6. Again, we're in the situation where we have 2 apples and we add 4 apples to end up giving us 6 apples. And we're done. Thirty-nine. The square root of x squared plus three x. The square root of x squared can be simplified. The square root of x squared is x, so we have x plus three x. I have one apple plus three apples gives us four apples by combining like terms. 39. Remember, there's a 1 out here in front. So you have 1 plus 3 gives us the 4. 41. The square root of x squared plus the square root of y squared. Both of these radicals can be simplified. The square root of x squared is x, the square root of y squared is y, so x plus y, and we're done. 43, square root of a squared minus the square root of b squared. Both of these radicals can be simplified. The square root of a squared is a, 
square root of b squared is b. These terms are different, and we cannot combine them. We're done. Forty-five. We have the cube root of four plus two times the cube root of four. Notice here again, our radicals are simplified, meaning I have one apple plus two apples. Now, one apple plus two apples, if I want to put the one out here, will end up giving us three apples. And we're done. Forty-seven. Five times a cube root of three minus two times a cube root of three. Five apples minus two apples is going to give us three apples. And we're done. Notice by the distributive property, five minus two times the cube root of three. Remember, five minus two is three. And we're going to keep the term which is cube root of 3. Again, final answer is 3 times the cube root of 3. Forty-nine. Seven times the cube root of 8 minus the cube root of 5. The first radical, notice, cube root of 8, is not simplified or in this case we should say is not evaluated because the cube root of 8 is the value 2. The cube root of 5 is a simplified radical because if you notice again here the prime value 5 under a radical has a power of 1 and the index is actually bigger than the power. That means this 3 is bigger than the 1 so my radical here is actually simplified. I just have to multiply 7 with 2 to get 14, and that's minus the cube root of 5. This is 49. Fifty-one. Cube root of 54 plus the cube root of 27 minus 8. Now, the cube root of 54 can be simplified. The cube root of 27 can be evaluated. Because the cube root of 27 is actually 3, 27 is a perfect cube. So I have this 3 minus 8, and I have to simplify the cube root of 54. Now, to simplify the cube root of 54, I need the largest perfect cube that divides 54 with the zero remainder, and you have your 27 times your 2. So you're going to use the fact that 27 is a perfect cube. By the product rule, cube root of 27 times the cube root of 2, and the cube root of 27 is actually 3. 3 times the cube root of 2. Now, don't forget, we have the addition of 3 and subtracting 8 here. That's plus 3 minus 8, which gives you negative 5. So 3 times the cube root of 2 minus 5, these terms are not like, and we're done. 53. The cube root of x plus the cube root of xy plus, sorry, those are square roots. Let's take that back. The square root of x plus the square root of xy plus the square root of y. Now, every one of these radicals is simplified. The square root of x is one type. We have the square root of y here as another. And then we have this middle radical. The square root of 
square root of xy. Now these terms are all different. These radicals are all different. What we have under the radical is three different types of terms. The first one just has that x. The last one has the y. The middle term has your xy. Now notice that these are simplified because if we go back and think about what we discussed. The index for these square roots here is 2. So for every one of these radicals, we have an index value of 2. And the power here is 1, 1, 1, and 1. Your index is larger than the power. This tells us that we're simplified. So we're done just by knowing what a simplified radical looks like. Fifty-five. The square root of x plus the square root of xy plus the square root of x. I have an apple plus another apple, and this middle term is something different. Call it a banana. I can only combine my apples, so I end up with two apples plus a banana. And we're done.